Sing unto the Lord a new song. Well, here we are, another week coming together with you on We're Burning Daylight. I so enjoy each day that we come together and we read God's Word. Reading God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Reading God's Word is a way to increase our faith. Reading God's Word and reading it back to Him in prayer is praying God's will. I encourage you not just to spend this few minutes because we're just taking selected portions uh, that go in... Uh, uh, in union with the devotion each day, uh, and then we utilize that to really drive home that devotion in the live dead joy. So I'll, with all that being said, spend more time with the Lord throughout the day in private abiding time. Abide in Christ. Abide in Him. Not just in reading, not just in prayer, but I want you just to spend time in praise, just gloriously, uh, just uh, being alone with God. Shut in with God, especially during these days where that word shut in seems to be so prominent amongst those that are uh, handing down guidelines. What an opportunity for you and I to spend with the Lord. Well, if you would, grab that cup of coffee this morning. Get caffeinated because here we go. We're going to start off today in Psalm 65. Let us read together the infinite power and goodness of our God. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. And to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that atonement sacrifice, the blood that you spilled at Calvary, the blood that was not just spilled for our healing, but most importantly for our salvation, that both our soul and our bodies would be made well. So I just take a moment and I pray this atonement prayer uh, for those that are here that need Jesus as their Savior, that your soul is right with the Lord today. If it is not, would you spend a few moments just confessing your sins to the Lord? And if you need a touch in your body today, let that atonement sacrifice uh, be that which you pray uh, the blood of Jesus over your body, that by his stripes you were healed. Thank you for letting me just kind of veer off and pray for you this morning. I pray you receive that this well. Let's, let's, let's go on in verse 4. Blessed is the man you choose and calls to approach you. That he may dwell in his, your courts, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, O of your holy temple. By awesome deeds and righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. You who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth, as far as of the far off seas, who establish the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power, you will still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. Though they also who dwell in the furthest parts are afraid of your size, you make the outgoings of the morning and evening rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. Let it be so today, dear Lord Jesus. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness and little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy, they also sing. I pray there is a song in your heart today. Let it be so. Make up songs in the Lord. Just exalt his name in praise today. I'm going to go to uh, Ezekiel today. And I'm going to pick up in verse 24 of chapter 28. There are several other chapters that are uh, portioned today uh, with our Live Dead Joy. But this is just what I would like to, uh, in my selected reading, deliver to you. Verse 24, And there, there shall no longer be a pricking prior and a painful thorn for the house of Israel from, from among all who are around them, who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Thus saith the Lord God, 
When I have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and am hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own land which I gave to my servant Jacob. And they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgment on all those around them who despise them. Then they shall know I am the Lord their God. We're going to leapfrog uh, our gospel reading today. You can pick that up a little bit later. In that abiding time, I encourage you to take. And I'm going to pick up in Romans chapter 16. I'm going to move into verse 17 and just take my time here and read this as we prepare to go to the Lord in our devotion. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. I've got to read it again. This is the word of God. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses Contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, here's what you need to do. Avoid them. Avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all, therefore I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen and amen. Let's move directly into our devotion today. Audible arrogance. Arrogance tends to be verbalized. It's so true, isn't it? What, while it is true that we can retreat into haughty and condescending silence... For the most part, we unveil our arrogance by what we say about ourselves and others. Arrogance is but a manifestation of insecurity, which functions on the premise that we, by putting others down, we lift ourselves up. God absolutely hates arrogance. Can I say that again? God absolutely hates arrogance. And he goes to great lengths to drive it out of his people. It is impossible to represent Jesus correctly from a prideful pulpit because pride distorts the image of God. Based on the premise that arrogance is insecurity in disguise, our insecurity tends to be verbalized in these primary ways. First, self-serving speech. Second, speaking when we should be silent. And last but not least, defending ourselves. This is going to be a freedom devotion today. When we finish this today, I believe there are going to be those who are going to be free from this bondage of arrogance and no longer, no longer will you be at odds with God, but you will be on and, and in a place of just a blessing to others by the life that you're living. Hear this, self-serving speech. Paul uh, said those who with a smooth words and flattering speech deceive hearts of the sin simple. We read this in Romans. When we use our verbal gifts to manipulate and distort truth, this is offensive to God. We may be golden-tongued and able to convince others, but Jesus is singularly unimpressed. Manipulators, even Christian ones, come on now, have learned to be wise in what is evil, but there is nothing manipulative or deceptive about God. Paul gave the intriguing image of God crushing Satan under our feet in this context of deceptive speech. Self-serving speech lifts up Satan, and Jesus does not tolerate this rebellion. Come on now. Come on, let's put Satan under our feet. Let us not be arrogant or prideful. Second, speaking when we should be silent. Much of our speech is foolish and contributes nothing of life to the hearer. Much of our speech is foolish and contributes nothing of life to the hearer. Come on, let's say it. I'm telling you, this is speaking loudly. Much of our speech is foolish and contributes nothing of life to a hearer. There should be some amens on this messaging this morning. 
Arrogance and insecurity cause us to blabber, while humility and security cause us to be comfortable in silence. Humility listens. The more humble we are, the more quickly we listen, the more hesitantly we speak. <laughs> Woo! Jesus is absolutely thrilled with those who listen to him more than they talk to him. You know I'm going to repeat that. Jesus is absolutely thrilled with those who listen to him more than they talk to him. Come on. We have two ears and one mouth. Maybe we should listen twice as much as what we speak. Come on, let's listen. Somehow we have come to believe that prayers is best defined by talking to Jesus. How delighted he is with us who linger in his presence and say nothing and ask nothing but simply wait for him to speak. Stand still and know that I am God. So add to that abiding time we aforementioned just listening. We demonstrate humility in prayer by listening more than petitioning. Defending ourselves is the last point we'll make today. Psalm 119, 23 reminds us that the best response to insecurity of others is that demonstrated by verbal attacks and criticism is to meditate on God's Word. It's hard to meditate on God's Word unless you open God's Word. Open God's Word. I don't mean take God's Word and just lay it on your head. I mean you open God's Word, you read it, you soak in. You soak in what is being said to you. Our natural inclination is to use the words to defend ourselves. This too demonstrates insecurity. God wants us to feel secure enough in Him not to utter one word in self-defense. How difficult that is. From personal experience, how difficult that is. But to remain silent. As Jesus remained silent going to the cross, our chief supreme example the more strenuously we defend ourselves, the more we show our insecurity and our arrogance. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us of insecurities. Forgive us of arrogance. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that it is not by might nor hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Not by might nor by spirit, but by your words, Lord Jesus, today. Lord God, stir in me uh, a new life. Stir in those that are listening a new life. Lord God, let us follow what has been said today. Let us follow what not only we read and followed along in listening, but Lord Jesus, let your spirit stir within us today. Lord, we pray that today, hallelujah, that we are a new creation in you. Lord, though we have been saved, thank you. Lord, that you have worked on our salvation today. Thank you for working on this, this, this clay today, molding and shaping us in the image you need us to be today, for this day, for this hour. Lord, that we might be oh, not just a blessing to others, but we will be that witness that is necessary and needed, that they might turn their life fully over to you. God, until, Lord Jesus, your return, let us be fervent, for we're burning daylight. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.